Welcome to this video series that will cover the screening and strategy selection tool. You'll notice this tool is in beta form. Uh, this video will show you how to use the tool and what the intent was behind it. And we'll be looking for feedback on changes before it's released for actual use. Thank you for watching the video and your participation. Okay, so before we get into the details of actually using the tool, I wanted to kind of go through the layout and get you a little bit familiar with it first. Uh, so you'll notice we're in Excel. Uh, this tool has been developed in Excel at this point. Hopefully, eventually, it'll make its way into more of a electronic live web-based type form that would automatically tie into our data warehouse type systems and and be more dynamic but for now it's in Excel you'll notice there's uh, six different tabs uh, first tab just kind of gives you some you know overall directions that kind of guide you through how to fill this out uh, we'll be covering all these different steps uh, the screen is actually where you're screening the, the, the projects these two tabs right here are where you'll document in narrative form what you know the decisions and the rationale behind the decisions you made uh, this tab is one, once you've actually gone through the screening tab based on the information you fill out in the screening tab it'll guide you to a, a strategy and a team and, and any kind of constraints it's kind of it's a guidance document it kind of gives you some some directions you might want to consider and then at the uh, very end you'll notice we'll go to a value management plan since every project requires a value management plan we thought we'd tie this screening and strategy tool to the value management plan and once you uh, fill this out uh, you, you can again provide it to the PM and uh, you've, you've and they can in include it with the PMP okay so now that we're uh, let's advance into the screening tool and get into some details about it uh, you start here with uh, project type information you'll notice as you tab through it's a form driven so it, it, you only fill out the areas you're intended to fill out uh, this area is important cost let's put in cost let's say it's 12 million dollars so you'll enter the the cost of the task uh, this is a pull down that shows you where are you in the process Hopefully you're early in the process, but you know we've put, kind of put in some key milestone dates or percentages. This may be something we want to rethink. Maybe the percentages is not the appropriate way to do it, but that's how it's been programmed so far. And then you have a series of questions. Um, these uh, this orange kind of area is a area that's kind of you know special questions if you will that are you know program there's programming behind it if you answer the question a certain way then the the form responds accordingly uh, so I'll give you for instance the, this first question is is the project program procurement federally funded and is core the design agent if the answer is no then it automatically um, toggles on or, or blocks the uh, uh, graze out the form so you don't have to uh, you know fill out anything else and you notice these two boxes are linked so you know that makes it pretty simple you just skip all this stuff and this you know then you would just document <clears throat> that we're not responsible and move on um, these other questions again if you answer the questions the, the form responds accordingly so on and so forth there's a key question down here is the project program procurement over 10 million um, you say yes it you know it says okay we don't even have to answer these two questions now I guess we could tie it to the dollars but we haven't done that um, so if you hit yes and and then you when you get finished with this this should automatically toggle proceed the screening process but if it doesn't you know you just have to pick it now we did it on purpose because if you accidentally toggled limited opportunity then it gives you this error saying that you can't do limited opportunity 10 million and over headquarters is not currently allowing for a limited opportunity to be toggled so this is this is going to give you that error 
Uh, so you'd have to toggle proceed to strategy if that case. Um, so now once you've moved down to the next stage of the screening process, the, the first stage up here is intended to kind of answer some very quick questions, hopefully allow you to do some bundling, grouping of projects, and, and kind of narrow the list and filter out things that are not, you know, that maybe aren't appropriate or there, are, there is truly low opportunity for them. Um, so that's what the initial screening process does. The second stage gets into a little bit of detail, um, and a, but, but not so much detail that you can't really answer these types of questions. Because you got to keep in mind at the early stages of the game, you really don't have a lot of information in which to make a judgment call. Uh, so the idea is you'd answer these questions, the VEO would be filling it out. Uh, you'll be working with the PDT to answer some of these questions. And at the end, the idea is you'll make an overall judgment as to the overall complexity of the circumstance. So you got a low, moderate, high. Now this is, a, this is an area you have to fill out. There's programming that's looking for information from these, these check boxes. So uh, you have to fill this out. So we're just gonna, we'll, we'll pick moderate uh, and we'll go on and pick, uh, let's say we're at 15 to 25%, for example. Um, so we'll go on and choose that, and we'll use this. We'll use this as an example moving forward. So that's the uh, the screening page. Um, now I guess one other thing to to mention is if you were to let's say that this was less than ten million. Let's say it was four million, um, and you were to toggle on limited opportunity, you're going to see this this the message come up says narrative required if limited opportunity must be documented on page three. So if for whatever reason you were able to, to document or to indicate limited opportunity, you'd have to go to page three and describe in narrative form why you think it's limited opportunity. This is for documentation and uh, for, you know, stored in the file. So if you're ever audited, then that you have this information to back up your decisions. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll go back to 12 million just for the heck of it. You'll notice it can't do it, so you can't do limited opportunity. So we'll go back to pre proceed to strategy. So um, again, these are just kind of questions to kind of get you thinking about things that. Um, you know, might make a little bit of difference in trying to, to select what you should do and what you maybe sh maybe should let go. On the uh, screening tool, one thing I didn't mention a minute ago is that when you finish going through the strategy screening, whatever complexity judgments you make, no matter what, you, you need to document the rationale on page four. So on page four, you fill out this narrative, you know, kind of documenting all the uh, variables that you considered, all the information you considered. That way someone else comes back and audits this, they can understand the rationale behind the decision you made. So once you've uh, finished filling out this, this page, especially dollars, where in the delivery process you are, and complexity, you go to the strategy page and you see it pulls forward and it's grayed out actually it should be protected I'll protect it later um, actually let me just do it now so you won't be able to pick these fields okay and so it pulls this from the previous sheet and based on that information it actually pulls forward a suggested strategy um, you know, I know that for the sake of this video, you may not understand really what these definitions are. Uh, there will be other videos likely that will elaborate on them, but, um, you know, try to define different levels of effort for the different scenarios that we encounter in the VE world. So based on the way we answer the screening tool, It'll make a suggested strategy selection, and it will in turn bring in the definition of that strategy. So 
uh, we brought it here so that it would be con more convenient. It kind of gives you an explanation of what that strategy is about and then some examples of where that may occur. Okay, you'll notice an optional strategy. So depending on the, the, these variables, these attributes, you know, you may have an optional strategy. Like in this case, it's saying you might want to do two studies as an option. Uh, you know, because you got you know, you're early in the game, it's moderately priced. I mean, 12 million bucks, still quite a bit of money. Uh, you, you got moderate opportunity. It's not those those variables, those attributes didn't quite tip the scales towards you know warranting doing two studies by default. But you know, you're on the you're on that, that gray area. You may you may want to consider doing two studies. So it kind of illustrates that. Also. It kind of gives you an idea of, about team makeup. You know, you kind of got integrated teams, independent teams, and uh, blended teams. Those are kind of your your three different buckets of, of teams you, you you have to choose from. So it's it's saying that by default um, you could do an independent team or a blended team. You know and I'm surprised it's saying integrate. I have to look into this. It may not be, that might not be appropriate. But uh, there's a lot of programming behind this, a lot of if statements, and it gets a little confusing trying to keep them straight. So uh, that's why it's in beta form. If we find some combination that doesn't make sense, please bring it up so we can fix it. Um, so let's go play, let's play around with it for a second. Let's say if we change this, um, right now notice it's saying abbreviated study. So let's see what happens if we change it to late. It's going to tell you you're going to have to do a late study. Because, uh, I mean, you're, you're past the point where you, we really don't want to do VE, but you, know, you have, may, may not have a, cho a choice in a particular case. So that's kind of a different strategy, if you will. Uh, let's say that um, we were at past 35 percent you'll notice it says independent or blended it says an integrated team cannot be used because it's been defined that if you're past 35 percent we shouldn't really be using an integrated team they're kind of biased at that point and you shouldn't really use them so this application tries to prevent that or at least suggest that you not you not do that um, you know there's a Complexity. Let's say you change the complexity, and you have to toggle those back. They don't automatically toggle off. Um, so you change it to high. Um, so then it it, it it tells you you should do a standard study. It gives you an option of doing a standard and a late study. All right. Let's say that you change the duration back to some early stage, and let's make this. I don't know, let's make this a hundred million dollars. Now, you'll notice it defaults to two different studies, value planning and a standard study. You know, it's saying with that combination of early hundred million bucks and a high level of complexity, it warrants two different two different efforts. So that's kind of how this thing works, is it it uh it kind of tells you, you know, here's the strategy we think is maybe you know most appropriate for your circumstances, and here's the team we think, uh, you know, you might want to consider consider using. So again, these are just suggestions. You know, uh, you'll see here in a few minutes that you have an opportunity to override it should you choose, but these are suggestions. Now that we've gone through the screening and strategy select, selection guidance tool, we're now in the value management plan, which is the last tab. You'll notice it says page one. The reason it says page one is because when you print this out, you probably want the value management plan on the, on the, as the first page. So uh, we went ahead and put the tabs in the correct order in which how you fill the tool out. The initial beta version had it, had it first and it was confusing so um, so the this value management plan form is modeled after the 8023 G 
Uh, so you fill out goals and objectives, and then you start to, to make the decisions and rec record the decisions that you made. You can choose to follow the, the guidance that was given in the strategy, you know, for example, like here. Uh, but you know you have the opportunity to override that. We did not link intentionally. Did not link the strategy and the VMP together. That way, if the VEO decided they wanted to override it, they could. Um, hopefully, you would in, you would in turn just modify the answers to support your decision that you that you record here. But uh, teaches on. Uh, we did try to build in some programming a little bit in here. So, for example, if you were to toggle low opportunity, it knows that this particular task was 100 million bucks. So it can't be, sorry, it can't be uh, low opportunity. So it'll give you that flag. Uh, so you have to choose conduct the effort. Um, then you have the various strategies that are available to you. So the strategy that's being guided is uh, value planning and abbreviated study. So you could come over here and do value planning and abbreviated. Uh, and if you decided that, nah, I'm not going to do value planning, I'm just going to do the abbreviated study, you have that choice. Um, now there's a couple things like scans. If you were to toggle on scan, you'll see this error here. It says scan is strictly limited to projects in the two to five million dollar range. For projects greater than or equal to $10 million, prior approval from headquarters chief of OVE is needed. This is a constraint that headquarters is applied. So it, it'll, it'll give you some of those flags. Um, but you have that opportunity. And then uh, under uh, the team, you know, sometimes okay, this is a single effort, multiple effort. This is, in other words, it's kind of like we talked about, uh, you know, value planning and abbreviated study. So that would be a multiple effort. You know, it just allows you to, it, it's an indicator that you didn't accidentally just toggle, leave one of these things toggled. You intended truly to have multiple efforts. Because you know, if you had single effort and these two boxes toggled, you'd realize one of these is probably wrong. Um, so that's what that's about. And then independent team, integrated team, or blended team. Now, there is an error, like if you were to do an integrated team, and let's say you were past uh, past 35%, this is going to give you an error saying that integrated is not allowed, or you really shouldn't do this. And I wouldn't say not allowed, but you shouldn't do it. So, um, so there's that programming in place. Let me change this back. Just I don't know, be consistent. So. Uh, then you got waiver. You know there is a, the the way uh, waivers are kind of intended to be handled is since we have all these different strategies available to us, including low opportunity. You know, that's something we didn't really have before. So you have all these different ways in which you can apply VE. Um, so we really don't want to do a waiver. It's kind of the idea is that you either you either you know come up with some strategy that makes that makes sense. Or you document as low opportunity and move on. Um, but if for some reason you can't get the PM and the PDT to agree with your strategy and you're kind of at a, at a crossroads or a stalemate, if you will, then the only other option you have is a waiver. And so therefore you would toggle this box accordingly and then follow the waiver procedures. Um, moving down, we, we've got schedules. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time getting into schedules right this moment, but Currently, we have these these milestone schedules here with ML285, CW285, CW192, and then you have the uh, the finished milestones. I mean, these are these are dates that we pretty much use now, and the the PMs use for for VE. Uh, this is kind of recognizing that there's all these other dates that fall in between that as a VEO would be kind of nice to have uh, to be able to track. Uh, the progress of the project. So um, these are proposed dates that we could put in into the VMP and then there's the idea is that this information will eventually find its way into a, a database, into a you know a web, web type system to where we can use this information, you know, run reports on and so forth. Uh, team members, this is kind of a, a, 
a different approach to the VMP. We, this doesn't currently exist, uh, but proposal here is that you can record all your team members that you're anticipating that will be involved in their respective. You know, if it's, a, if it's USACE employee, it'd be the, their org code, and then you could kind of put some budgets in here. Um, you know, maybe we could tie this to an IGE or something like that that would would pull forward a, a budget number. And then when you provided this to the PM for their PMP, they'd already have a budget number set up. And then you would have uh, opportunity to sign uh, for the project manager to sign and the VEO to sign. So that's kind of the, the concept behind the value management plan. Uh, again, everything's in beta form. So uh, th this page alone may evolve uh, kind of get a little bit more order to it. It's kind of arranged a little oddly at the moment, but uh, certainly welcome comments. We appreciate you taking the moment to uh, review this uh, brief training video. Wanted to reemphasize the fact that this is in beta mode at this point. If you're seeing this video, it means you've been uh, asked to Go ahead and pilot this tool. Uh, we want feedback. Uh, eventually, this tool will be released uh, to the field for widespread use. But for now, we want to kind of test it. You know, try to break it, see see what uh, is working, what's not working, and uh, we welcome feedback. Um, the spreadsheet itself is locked. It's not password protected. Um, at some point when it's released to the field, it probably will be password protected. Uh, so if you can, try to use it without unlocking it. Uh, but if you do, for some reason, need to unlock it, for some reason, it's just unlocked without, without a password. So uh, again, thank you. We welcome feedback. Uh, so look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Bye.